All right, hey everyone. Uh, let's find my terminal. So yeah, today, um, like Miranda said, I'm gonna talk about um, some monorepos. And this is kind of a demo project I've been working on um, to kind of get the feel for what it's like to use Dagger in uh, a big monorepo. So today, the, the context of this is mostly focused on uh, a multi-language repo and uh, multiple teams working in different languages. Uh, so not a lot of like, uh, interdependencies within the monorepo or anything like that today, mostly just looking at what it looks like to use multiple languages uh, in one project. Um, so in this demo monorepo today, we have um, like a full stack app where the back end is a, a Go API in Jin. Uh, the front end is a uh, React front end. And then there's a few different workers in Python. So this is, um, if we look at the project real quick. We can see we've got this back end and it's got some Go files here. And this project is um, like a, a super simple blog, basically. So um, the React front end shows all the blog posts, the back end serves the blog and the comments and all those things. Uh, and the workers, you know, in this uh, fictional company that built this blog, they built it and then they're like, okay, it's it's way too hard to write, com or write content. So let's just fake that part. So we have these workers that actually write posts and write comments on the blog because that's too much work for humans to do. So in our back end, we've got all the Go code here. And again, this is a Jin API and we'll go and look at that. And so let's say we have this uh, team that's focused on that and they like to work in Go all day. Uh, and then in the front end, we've got uh, this React app. And again, we've got this other team that works in JavaScript all day. And then the workers, maybe we have a team dedicated to that. Maybe we have lots of different people working on these things. But if we go to workers, we see um, we see a couple different uh, Python, basically cron workers that um, make the posts and the comments. And these are again written in Python. So the idea here is that if we go to let's start with back end. Um, we can see again we've got this um, Go app, and if we look at you know any of these things. Um, uh, it's basically just a uh, Gen API. So this is our, our backend component in Go. And if we look at our uh, CI, uh, we've got our, our CI written in, um, in Go using the Dagger Go SDK as well. So if you look at that real quick, uh, basic pipeline that uses the Golang container and just runs Go test. So this is um, our backend devs have this, you know, declarative environment where they've got all their mod caching and they say we always test on go 120 and um, this is the the ci for the back end so if i'm a go dev i can just say uh dagger run uh where am i in back end so we can run this real quick and then again this is running in go and we can just see it's going to run our test real quick and once they're done There we go. So our test passed. Um, now, if we go to our front end, again, uh, this team is working in JavaScript all day. So again, the team maintaining this part of the project, they probably, or they might not want to maintain their CI in Go or in Python, right? So the CI for this component, if we look at CI is in JavaScript now, right? So if I look at this one, Again, similar to the last one, um, but this time in JavaScript. So we have this specific version of Node that we're always testing in, uh, and then it just does our lid for now um, because that's all this project has right now. So if I run this, npm run CI, um, then it's you know same interface as the last time, except this time <clears throat> this is written in uh, in JavaScript. And then again, if we go to the workers, it's kind of the same story as you can imagine. Uh, so if I look at any of these, we have our comment generator, post generator. So if you look at our post generator, for example, we have, uh, this is the actual generator. So it uses Faker to write a fake post, right? Uh, if we look at our tests, so we look at ci.py, um, Again, we have a specific version of Python and we're running PyTest on it. 
So that's all great, right? Each team can have their pipelines and their own languages, but how do we actually pull that all together so that, you know, from our CI platform or from someone that has like a, a repo wide concern, how do they run all these things at once? Uh, so let's take a step back and look at, at the top level of this project. Again, um, we have this ci.py here. So this is like our, our global pipeline that handles the whole project. Uh, so if I look at this, we can see it actually pulls together all those pipelines we just looked at into this top level pipeline. So we're, we're basically doing, you know, dagger and dagger for the Go pipeline and the, the Node pipeline where, you know, for our backend here, um, and hopefully you can see uh, what I'm highlighting, but if not, you know, let's use our cursor. Um, so our backend here, and we've got that same Golang version. And this time, this Golang version is actually only being used to run the pipeline. Because again, that pipeline that we're mounting from that backend directory is being mounted. And then we're doing that same go run the I that we just ran before. And so this is actually gonna run our dagger pipeline that's in that backend directory. And so, you know, if I change this to go 1.19 out here, it doesn't matter because the, the tests are still gonna be run on whatever, um, we're still running that pipeline in the backend directory. So whatever we have set up there, is what's going to be run. This is just like the runtime for the pipeline itself, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and then front end, same idea, right? We're we're grabbing that front end directory, and then you know getting our node modules so that we can run the things there. And then we're just doing that same npm run ci, which runs that uh, JavaScript pipeline that was in that front end directory. And then for the workers, this one's uh, a bit cooler too because again we're Python calling Python. So instead of um, using that that nested dagger and dagger, we actually just call that module, right? So here we're, we're actually importing that and just running that subplot pipe. So if I look at that uh, workers CI, uh, you know, we have this sub pipeline that is the pipeline itself, right? So we're reusing the pipeline rather than executing that as dagger and dagger. Um, so anyway, I've talked for a minute. Let me just run this real quick. When you run this, this is going to be running the CI for the whole project. Uh, and again, we, we get this nice, um, you know, set up here. So within my workers, I can see my common generator tests, my post generator tests. Uh, if we look at the front end, we can see uh, here we have our cached and VM runs CI. So this is already cached uh, because nothing changed here. Um, and the back end, same deal. Um, we run this pipeline that's already cached. Uh, so let's say from this monorepo perspective, if we go ahead and go to um, backend main.go and we just change something here. And then we run this pipeline again. So this time, you know, our backend's not going to be fully cached because we just changed something in that backend. But you'll see once we get there, uh, you know, the rest of our project is cached because it's run in this isolated context where each part of our monorepo has its own pipeline. Uh, so this passed or it's passing, as we can see, there we go. So if we can go back up to that real quick, we can see that our uh, back end passed here. So at the very bottom there. Uh, and then if we go down to our node, we see on the, the right side of this line that was already cached and in our workers, same deal with our workers there so yeah super simple um well you'll see in the future i'll do some more um building this out with you know interconnected dependencies within the monorepo but this is kind of a, a proof of concept to look at um multiple languages and pipelines in multiple languages and pulling those together and that's that thanks kyle uh, a few just clarifying questions from the demo um I'm just asking, uh, so if you implement, so you've implemented the monorepo management features for Dagger as a Dagger pipeline, is that correct? Um, can you run that by me again? Sorry. Yeah, of course. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, oh yeah. So, like, 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 so you're kind of, you wanted Dagger to handle the monorepo better, like the different parts of it. And so you implemented it, but you implemented it on top of Dagger, basically, you didn't have to modify Dagger itself. You just wrote a pipeline that did what you wanted. Oh right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the key part here, if we look at um, 
you know, the, this top level pipeline where we're calling those sub pipelines in the different languages. Um, um, is this is flag the uh, experimental guy. privilege nesting? Uh, so that way it can, the dagger and dagger part is automatically detected. So I'm not running any Docker and Docker stuff in the pipeline. It's just going out to the, the parent dagger pipeline, basically. Yeah, that's awesome. You, it's like, a, it's it's sort of a very, it's, um you, you've designed your own kind of entry point system on the fly on top of Dagger. It's pretty cool. I think, yeah. I think the, the Airbyte repo, they have something similar, uh, but I think more Python specific. It's, you know, they assume Python end to end, but yeah. It's pretty, yeah. And that's pretty, where, you know, uh, you get into something like this where you can, um, you know, actually import those sub pipelines rather than uh, kind of nesting the Dagger part. Yeah, and we'll get some more stuff going with, um, you know, code reuse within this uh, monorepo CI as well. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, just one more clarifying uh, question, but it, it may have been kind of answered previously. Is is there a way we could have Dagger orchestrate other Dagger pipelines in subdirectories? For example, the root Dagger pipeline could grab all the other subdirectory pipelines and only run the pipelines with the label or name of test. You could do that. I mean, so again, this is, you know, I've manually coded this to say, here's a pipeline right here, go run that and so on. But, um, you know, this is just Python code. So if you want to run, if you want to write some Python code that crawls your project and looks for specific things, that's totally possible, right? It's not, it wouldn't be like a, a dagger specific thing necessarily, but it's just, um, you know, just code. And sorry, last one, and then we'll uh, we'll move on. Uh, is uh, just to be sure, this means pipelines cannot be trusted, and that one has uh, got to be careful what pipelines uh, one runs. Correct? Yeah, I think Solomon, you you got that. Oh yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's it'll it will be it will be real secure nest nesting. Like each nested pipeline will be properly sandboxed. Um, Meaning, you know, it'll have access to a real Dagger API, so it'll be able to run containers, et cetera, but it won't be able to access the contents of the parent pipeline or anything like that. But, you know, just to be sure, we 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 add the privileged and experimental, and I think scary, and you know, like we just want to make it scary for now because we're, you know, it's it's still an early feature, so we we can't promise it's properly sandboxed, but it's designed so that it can be. Is that, is that yeah? Someone contradict me if that's, but I'm pretty sure that's right. 